everyone, welcome to Bowl and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as Wealth of Pearls. It is Friday, July 8th and this is episode 27. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I have a few things to talk about housekeeping wise today and I'm going to put them at the end. So if anybody's interested in some of the stuff that's going on behind the scenes here at Wool and Spinning, please um, stick around for the end. I am having some technical difficulties with my launcher. Um, on the webcam, so if it if the show's a little bit disjointed, um, it's just because I'm having some recording issues that we'll fix later tonight. Um, all right, so I have been working on a few things, and um, I thought that I would go through each of them and show you. The first thing that I have to show you is actually a finished object. Um, I finished this yarn over the weekend, so over the long weekend. It was a long weekend here in Canada because we were celebrating Canada Day, and then of course it was July 4th in the U.S. So, um, happy Independence Day to the U.S. Um, this is actually still a bit damp, um, and it is BFL in silk. It's dyed by um, West Coast Colour and Carding, and she's a local to me dyer, and uh, also a friend of mine. And she, um, her colours are uh, very difficult to repeat, so her stuff tends to be quite... Um, saturated and the colorways, if you buy multiple um, bumps of fiber from her, each one sort of tends to be a little bit different. So what I generally do is I buy two or three that look similar and then I somehow ply them all together so that it makes them quite analogous. So this was spindle spun and I spun them um, 25 grams to each spindle and then I spun, plied two um, 50 gram um, braids. Uh, uh, skeins. So this is sort of how this one turned out. I'll see if I can get it sort of focused in on the camera so that you guys can have sort of a look at the Barbara Foley because it's quite interesting and I quite like it. Um, it's really kind of a neat effect and it's got these lovely greens and blues and teals and red and orange and peach. It's just a really interesting colorway. It's actually still a bit damp because it just um, I just washed it and it's just not drying very quickly. I don't know why. Anyways, this is going to be for James. Um, I, I, because I spun these on my drop spindle, I was going for something that was quite um, sort of a worsted weight light Aran. And it came out at seven wraps per inch, so it's perfect. Um, and it's going to be uh, mit mittens for sure, a toque for sure. He wants a scarf, so we'll see. Because um, I don't really want to knit a scarf for a toddler. <laughs> Um, I don't think it'll be worn that much, so we'll see sort of how that goes because I think that um, a better use of my time and um, an item for him is actually to have um, mittens and a, a new toque next year. So this is for him. And because I had um, another about 100, I think it was just shy of 100, I think it was about 88 grams left. I actually decided to take the rest of it and spin it quite finely. So this is what the fiber looked like in the raw in the raw form, like before I after I'd stripped it down, but before I had spun it. Um, I decided to spin the last little bit quite finely, and I'm going to do a pair of fingerless mitts for myself. And so this is being spun quite quite fine so that I can Navajo ply it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the two yarns next to each other. So this is on one of my turtle made spindles and I'm spinning it quite fine by just sort of pinching just a little bit of the fiber and pulling it down to create a finer yarn. So um, I'm really enjoying working on this. And I'm hoping um, to have it done relatively quickly. What's been taking up all of my time this week is actually the Sweet Georgia Fiber Club, which I don't want to show because I know some people really don't like spoilers. So um, I've been working on that so much that I haven't really had a lot of time to do anything else. Um, I was working on my American Tunis, and that's actually at almost exactly the same point that it was last week. So it looks the same, and... Um, I haven't really made any progress on it, so that's really quite boring, actually. There's really nothing to show you. 
So uh, hopefully once the fiber club is done for St. George, I'll be able to pick this back up and really make a dent in uh, combing some more of the fiber and also getting more of it spun because I'm really enjoying spinning that and it is so fast. It's just like the fiber just kind of slides along them each other and then once there's enough twist, it locks together. I'm just loving what it looks like and how it, um, I'm really excited to see it applied actually. That's what I'm really looking forward to. I did pull some more of my sweater spin for Tour de Fleece um, off of my uh, wheel. So this was spun on my Lendrum. And I am, this is actually still wet. So I'm trying to get this done um, during Tour de Fleece and pull off more. I have about 450 yards done now. So this big hank is actually two skeins. And these are the two that I had already pulled off. And I need to knit a wrist distaff that um, sort of is a two by two cuff um, to gauge how it wears and make sure that I um, have a, you know, well, a yarn that's going to wear really well in a sweater form because I'm hoping that this would be a real like workhorse sweater. I'd wear it for most kind of days hanging out with the kids. Um, the twist angle on it is quite severe. I'd say it's almost like 55 degrees. It's quite, it's quite severe. Um, so I'm really hoping that that will wear really well and that that will, um, yeah, just increase the, the wearability and the, and the durability of the, of the sweater. And it's got a really nice bounce to it, um, and a lovely loft. And as the yarn dries, it's neat to see it fluff up and become quite airy. And even though it's quite tightly plied, um, it's an interesting yarn. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it actually wears. Is it really that durable being a crossbreed and being a 100% wool? Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, so I'm hoping to get the wrist distaff uh, knit this weekend and then I'll carry, and I'm just going to carry on spinning because I want to get that done during Tour de Fleece so that I can knit it in August. That's the plan anyways. <laughs> Whether it's realistic, I don't know, because I've only got 450 yards done and I need another 1,000 yards. So at the rate that I'm going, I'm getting about um, 200 done every two or three weeks. So at this rate, I'm not going to get it done. But we'll see. The other thing that I wanted to show you, I just have to keep moving my mouse because otherwise my monitors turn off, um, is my Vermont cardigan that I have drastically um, modified. This is my Falkland that was um, hand carded by a local uh, person. And I'm not in the middle of a row this week. Sorry about that last week. So I thought that I would show you. This is what it looks like from the front. And I made it so that the um, shaping from the, from the lace stitch is actually wrapping around the front. So it's slowly moving its way in an A-line around to the front, which is really, really cool. Sorry for the clinking on the, on the mic, um, which is really neat. It's just got a really cool, uh, I think it almost creates a certain type of dynamic movement. Like it sort of um, creates a sense of, yeah, movement in the, in the piece. I really like it. And this is what the back looks like. And it's just a raglan. I'm hoping to put quite a big shawl on it. So I've actually, I'm going to stop where I am because I just finished a ball of yarn um, and I'm going to actually knit the sleeves next and then I'm going to come back and finish the body because I'm hoping to make it quite a good length of a cardigan, probably 22 inches long-ish and then um, have a quite a big shawl on it. So if I can um, finish the sleeves and know that I've got quite a bit of yarn, then you know, I'll be um, off to the races in terms of... Um, not running out of yarn because there's no way that I'm ever going to get this fiber ever again. <laughs> so uh, I know that she still has some, but it's it looks different now because it's another batch. So it's done. Um, I had a question. Um, I think it came from the Slack channel, but honestly, there's been so much chatter in there that I can't keep up <laughs> um, on where some of the questions come from. But I had a question about, uh, because we are starting breed studies, which is part of what I'm going to talk about in just a moment, um, somebody asked me how I store my sample cards. 
So I use large recipe cards for my sample cards, and you'll know what a spinner's control card is in just a minute because I'll show you. But this is my box, and it's just a standard recipe box that I found at Michael's. And um, these are all of my, my cards inside. So I have um, all of the um, tabs on the back. It's like sauces, dressings, microwave recipes, casseroles, meats. Like on the back is written all of like the traditional recipe card type uh, sections that you'd have in a recipe box. I flipped them around and I wrote uh, fine wools, long wools, coarse wools, medium wools, down, and then blends. Um, and I have my cards in each slot and that's sort of an example of what my cards look like. Um, so the for now that's how I'm organizing my stuff. Um, whether I continue to do it this way, I don't know. That was my, oh, this was my Falkland. So those were my singles for that sweater, and that was the plied yarn. The, I did a uh, three-ply. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to continue to do it this way. I have thought about doing a book or a binder. Um, but at this point, that's what that looks like. So for whomever asked, that is, <laughs> this is my... How I keep my stuff organized. So I am going to talk a little bit about Ruth Studies because I just launched that this month and I have a couple of minutes and I want to um, address that really quickly. So uh, in the Ravelry group there is a thread started for uh, Ruth Studies that was unlocked um, late last week. I just was thrilled when I saw that it had been unlocked. So it's a huge milestone for us to, pit, uh, to hit, and um, basically we're going to explore Norwegian, Baby Llama, and Cooper for the next six months. So in the Ravelry thread called titled Breed Study, and it is stickied in the Ravelry um, group, um, if you could go in there and fill out if you would like to participate and you, if you would like to buy some fiber, um, you can go in there and you can look follow the poll. Um, it's linked in the first um, the first post of that thread and uh, give me an idea of numbers and what you would want um, for fiber and all of the information for the breed study everything sort of to expect for the next number of months around the breed study is all there in that post on Ravelry um, under breed study so click on that and have a read and if you have any questions don't ever hesitate to get in touch with me um, for Patreon supporters, there is a private Slack channel that's devoted just to the breed study. So for those who are uh, Patreon supporters, there is a, um, a Slack channel for, for you. If you are not on the breed study uh, Patreon like, or Slack channel, sorry, can you please let me know? I've been trying to keep up with adding people, but with all the Tour de Fleece stuff going on right now, I'm losing track. So um, it's just a little bit confusing. Um, in there right now because usernames and email addresses don't always match up so um, if you guys can just give me a heads up in the general channel and I'll just add you in um, it takes it's like a, a two second exercise so um, yeah there isn't tons of chatter in the breed study um, channel yet and I think that's because we're just getting up and going so um, mostly people have been asking questions and filling out the poll and um, give me a heads up that they filled that out so I'm going to leave that up for another week or so the other thing that I needed to mention and this is part of breed studies is um, as some of you who are in Canada know um, Canada Post is escalating their job action um, so as of today technically um, they can go on strike there's a whole bunch of other information around that and, and stuff for that that um, has been disseminated for small business owners like myself Canada Post has been trying to send out emails and let us know the reality is we don't know how long it'll last it'll probably be 10 days to two weeks which is what it was back in uh, 2011 but I am gonna hold the fiber club and I'm not gonna email it I'm, I'm not gonna mail it out until Canada Post has resolved their drop job action so those of you who are signed up for the Fiber Club um, for as part of your Patreon support, um, please just hang on because I don't want it to get lost in the mail. So once Canada Post resolves their action, 
I'll head down to the post office and send all that out to you guys. It's all ready to go. I just um, haven't, I don't want to mail it until I know what Canada Post is doing. Same with the breed study. Um, I'm going to continue to work out the numbers and collect the full results. Once Canada Post has resolved their stuff, then we'll go ahead. Thankfully, we've got six months. So um, part of the process of doing these studies is figuring out all of this stuff. Um, so if you just um, bear with me, I appreciate your patience. Um, there is a couple of things that are coming down the pipeline on Patreon, so keep your um, eyes peeled. I um, am just working out sort of the final finishing touches, and then I'll be hitting launch. So for those of you who are maybe wanting to pledge or wanting to pledge more than, you know, 3 or $5 or whatever, and there's something else that you're looking for, I would love to hear from you. Um, and um, also, if you are interested, um, just keep checking and keep looking. To those who have already uh, participated and are already um, sort of in that uh, spinning circle group, thank you so much um, for all of you. I really appreciate it. So I thought I'd show you a finished uh, knitted object to finish off the show. So I just finished these. These are my Icelandic fingerless mitts. And uh, I just love how they turned out. This is The pattern is called Simple Lines, and it's by my friend Diana um, over at 100milewear.com. And this is uh, was um, Spunky Club. Um, it was December of 2015, I think, in Squirrel. So they turned out really well. I'm really happy with them. If you can believe it, they're my first pair of fingerless mitts that are actually for me. So, um, yeah, they turned out really well. I, I really like them. So that's them there. And this was all spindle spun on my Turtle Maid and plied on my Snyder Spindle Steampunk. So, yeah. So that's it for this week. I um, If you have any questions about anything, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. It's rachel at welfarepearls.com is my email address. You can message me on Ravelry um, at Welfare Pearls. And um, I hope that you enjoyed the show. Happy spinning, everyone. I'll see you next week. Bye.